latest installment of our ongoing Where Are They Now series features Madison College Athletics Hall of Famer Michael Capasio. For more than four decades after leaving the college, now serves as the athletic director at the Citadel in Charleston, South Carolina. The story of where his life has taken him, uh, what he's doing now, and how he remembers his time at then Madison Area Technical College can all be found at madisoncollegeathletics.com. You can also get it on our primary social media accounts. Now, in addition, I am joined today by Mr. Capasio to take our conversation a little bit further in these unprecedented times of sports and COVIDs and pandemics. Uh, so, Mr. Capasio, thank you so much for your time and your willingness to discuss this topic. Glad to be here, Adam. Thank you so much for having me. Um, also, you know, again, thank you for the time uh, getting me information to be able to look back at your time and what you've done since. I know a lot of our um, our faithful fans love to read those and, and see kind of where people have gone. And I think they'll, they'll really enjoy seeing where your life has taken you as, as much as I enjoyed kind of finding out about it. Sure. Glad. Um, so let's begin uh, this kind of COVID and sports conversation with an update um, from your side, how the Citadel has handled <laughs> athletics the past nine months, especially competition and practice. Well, um, Adam, you know that we, we made a decision very early on that we were going to compete in the spring. Um, we were one of the few FCS schools that played football in the fall, excuse me. Um, so uh, we made that decision for several reasons. Number one, we wanted our young people to be able to compete. They were here on campus. Um, number two, it kept our staff together and kept everybody employed and kept us moving forward. So we made that decision early on. We were probably ahead of a lot of the people as far as in regard to the testing. We had our testing protocols figured out by about March, April. So we were far advanced in the testing. We, we got results very quickly. We felt that we could move forward on a limited um, uh, schedule for the fall. And we did, we played soccer, we played football, we played cross country, uh, we played volleyball. So we wanted to compete. It was very important for us to have our young people compete. We needed to find a way to do that. We set a plan and um, we executed the plan and um, it worked. Now, for those that maybe don't know, the Citadel is a U.S. military college competing at the NCAA Division I <laughs> level. Um, being a military college, has that made handling athletics and the pandemic harder than maybe a traditional university or college or easier in some ways? Well, Adam, it was easier because what we did, uh, <laughs> I wasn't the most popular guy around, but we locked down. So you came here and we locked you in and we locked you in for the first four weeks. So you could not leave campus. What we wanted to do was create a bubble. Okay. And get that. This was the first year in our history that we had a so-called athletic dorm or barracks. You know, usually we mix in with the core. The core here, the military side, always is the dominant over athletics. They're here first for, for an education. Very few of our kids are going to go on. Don't get me wrong. we got a couple NFL guys that are in the Pro Bowl this year. But other than that, it's very limited. So uh, we wanted to create that bubble. And we were able to do that to get started. And then once we created that bubble, we were able to maintain it. But we were doing some tests. Uh, some teams, we were, you know, we played Clemson this year. We had to test four times that week before we played Clemson. Uh, like I said, the thing that we had in place early on was the testing protocol. And we knew that if we could master that and get a handle on that, it would give us an opportunity to play. And that's what we did. So, but to, to answer your question, it was easier as a military co college because we locked them down. And that's the way life. And we said, if you're going to compete now, don't get me wrong. We had a lot of kids opt out. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to do that. And that, that was fine. But our football team would probably one of the best teams we had coming back. Um, we had six of our, we're a running team. Our running backs did not, they all opted out. We had a linebacker playing fullback, but we're going to compete. We're going to play. Our kids wanted to play and they wanted to compete. They didn't want to sit in the barracks for four months, five months. And with that, Adam, on top of that is I would have had a very difficult decision made because we would probably would have laid off 50 people. So would you say the, the financial part, has that been the, the biggest challenge for you? <clears throat> Financially, yes, it is. But the one thing we've done here is that we uh, do a pretty good job of managing our budget. We do not extend and go above our means. We live within our means. And so when everybody else in our league is about $3 million in a hole, we're going to be about 1.2. Um, uh, we're also a very good fundraising school. My background, uh, I came to this job 
uh, as vice president for development. So I do a lot of fundraising and we had a very <laughs> successful year fundraising. Um, our, our fans are very generous and that helped offset a lot of that as well too. Playing the guarantee games in the fall, Adam allowed us to plug a $650,000 hole. So those things all came into place. Yes, the financial, are we going to be in a hole? Yes, but we're not gonna be in a hole like a lot of colleges across the country. I know you, like anybody else, we don't have a crystal ball in terms of COVID and how this is all going to continue to play out, but kind of a return to normalcy in the sports world. Can it happen? When do you foresee it possibly happening? I, 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 I think it's going to be uh, at the end of the summer. I really do. Um, maybe getting back to some type of normalcy. We are starting vaccines here, uh, like everybody across the country. Then again, our school is housing the vaccines, one of the three locations in the state. So that gives us an advantage to be able to get to those a little bit easier and a little bit more accessible. Mm -hmm. So that's a big advantage to us. And, and the first people we'll do, of course, is uh, our trainers and athletic people and things like that. Uh, and then it will go come down to the to the athletes so that when we're competing and stuff, we can, we can limit that testing cost, which uh, as you know, are, are enormous. Um, so I think, I think we're a ways away. Our league decided to play football in the spring, which I voted against. I don't think we're going to play football in the spring. But financially, um, when you don't have people at games, uh, it's a big hit. Our booster club took a big hit, obviously. Uh, so financially, yes, it's, uh, we lost three guaranteed games in basketball this year that uh, equated to about $300,000. $300, One of them was Duke. We're coming up to Illinois again. Um, so, yeah, financially, it's, it's a big concern. What sort of lasting impacts might there be, whether they be positive or negative from, you know, sports and COVID colliding? Uh, I think one of the positive is going to be, as I talked to you earlier about, about reality setting in with college athletics. Um, I've been in college athletics my whole life, but I think it's absolutely ridiculous to pay somebody $10 million to coach football. I hope uh, that this will bring reality when you have schools like the University of Wisconsin, some of the bigger schools in the, co in the, in the country, you know, facing 40, 50, 60, 70 million dollar debts. Um, obviously, they can offset that for you, but two years they can't. So I hope what this really does is it gets back to reality. We, we, we had 13 positions I did not fill in the fall. I will need to fill some of them in the spring to be able to, to do all our sports. But um, I think you take a look at do we really need all these people? And I think we talked earlier that when you see schools like Louisville and Texas laying off 30, 40, 50 people, you probably don't. Um, so what I hope this does is I hope this brings some reality back to college athletics, which I think right now is getting too much professional. If you look at the power fives, the way those people are operating, they are not operating like the Citadel. Okay. They are not operating like um, a firm in, in, in Walford and in, in schools in our league, East Tennessee state. There's such a gap and that gap is growing every year. It's not, it's growing. And so what I really hope this does is bring some reality back to college athletics. Financial. Have you learned anything about yourself, whether it be personally or as an athletic director during these unusual <laughs> times? Well, I learned one thing. I should have stayed in the foundation. <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, for me personally, um, you know, when we, we we were not coming to work, I came to work every day, some days in my pajamas. I was the only one here. Um, but from March, until August, we had our day, my day started every day with a two hour cobalt meeting. So uh, 10 hours to start my week were just to that. And I put a sheet together. I was spending probably 20 to 30 hours a week on cobalt, either trying to figure out the testing, travel, scheduling, all the other things that come with that, that it brought. Um, I can't say it made me a better person, but I think it made me, um, it made me take a step back and really re realize how lucky you were because as I told our coaches, um, you're still working. And we were very, very fortunate in our particular situation. And that's only me in our situation. Okay. Um, that sometimes you really have to look at what you have and not what you don't have. You know, it's always, well, if we had this, if we had this, well, you know, we're stumbling along like everybody else, but uh, we're very fortunate to still be here. And so it makes you appreciate really a little bit more what you do have. Um, once again, I want to thank you, Michael Capasio, Athletics Director at the Citadel, for your cooperation, not just today, but um, in writing the piece. Uh, again, where are they now? Are uh, featured at madisoncollegeathletics.com and on social media.
Uh, Michael, it's been uh, a pleasure. Uh, much appreciated. And I uh, look forward to maybe future conversations. Adam, thank you so much for your time. And good luck to everybody at Madison College. Appreciate it.